You guys asked for it, so today we're editing your photos. We asked members of the lab, which is our online photography community, to send us raw photos so that we can edit them for you today. Just a quick note, this is not a critique, and we're super grateful for everyone who submitted an image. Please don't critique these photos in the comment section. By now, we're sure you've heard about Squarespace, and for a good reason. Not only have they been supporting our channel for a long time, we've been happy customers of theirs for years. They make it incredibly simple to get a blog, portfolio, or online store up and running in no time with their beautiful designer templates. If you run into any problems along the way, they have terrific 24-7 customer support to help you out. And you don't have to worry about updating and installing things because it's an all-in-one platform. To find out how easy it is to set up your own website and save 10%, head to squarespace.com slash mangostreet and use the code mangostreet at checkout. No matter what you shoot, it'll look great on Squarespace. So the thing we want to get right first is the skin tone. That's always the most important thing to get right in a photo with people in it. We have a collection of presets that we've purchased over the years. Our go-to, which we've mentioned in one of our previous tutorials, is the Phil Chester presets. I'll just throw it on and you can take a look. Right there, it develops like the tone, the mood of the image is like instantly defined. And so it's, uh, it's a really good starting point. I would do an adjustment brush to kind of keep them the focus and leave the background more Darker, in Darker, yeah. yeah. So I'm just gonna do a rough adjustment brush over, nothing major there. If you hit O on the keyboard, you can see the mask you've made. You can hold Option or Alt to erase your mask and refine it. I'm just, I'm gonna pump the shadows a little bit because I think we're losing too much of the sweater here. Yeah, for sure. There's like, um, there needs to be more of a separation between her sweater and the background. Exactly. They need to pop out a little bit more. That, that already did a lot. Yeah. And if we wanna keep the background darker, we can just do a graduated filter, which is this icon right here, and bring that out. Don't want to overdo it again. Uh, everything is kind of in moderation here, so. Can you turn the highlights down just a smidge? And I think that one's done. Looks good. Concert photos can always be really difficult because you have ever-changing lighting conditions. And in this instance, we have this orangish red light, which in my opinion is like the hardest light to edit with because you can't just adjust the white balance to fix the skin tone. Whereas if the, the light was blue, yellow, magenta, or green, you can kind of use the sliders to bring it back to a more natural looking skin tone. So in this instance, I like to put it in black and white. If I lift the red mix, that's making him brighter because he's covered mostly in red. So now I think I would just like sculpt um, the contrast a little bit to give it more of a customized look. So, in the tone grid. Yeah. And then I think I'll raise the shadows, bring down the highlights a touch maybe. We don't want to lose too much information, so anytime like on his nose here, we can see if we bring down the highlights if we get more detail back. I like having more definition in the face, so that's why I do that. You can lift the center point to make your image a little brighter. Um, I think that looks pretty good right there. And then once again, I like to do a little bit of sharpening. Just a little bit. Yeah, you can mask it if you want. Masking it is always recommended. Yeah, like right around there is probably good. A sharpening of 25 should be fine. Cool. Cool, let's move on. I need it's over. So let's just start with the tone curve. So I'm going to sculpt the, the contrast on the tone curve and then I'm going to bring down the overall contrast just to rein it in. And now I'm going to go straight down to camera calibration. We go more in depth with camera calibration in our part five of our photo shoot series where we edit those photos. So if you want to learn more about that, watch that video. But this will help give us the tones for the image. You know what really bothers me? What's that? The highlights on his hand. I feel like it came from the tone curve. That hump's probably a little too big. That's what she said. <clears throat> yeah, I think you just need to flick the tip on the top. Just. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, so always watch that. Make sure that you don't get too out of control like I just did with the tone curve. You can also use these um, to help you as well. Then we can add some split toning in, maybe some slight yellow in the shadows. If you want to see what you're doing, just crank the saturation up, grab the hue that you want, 
and then bring it way back down. And you'll just add like a little bit of warmth back in. So that's before and then that's after. We're clicking on the target adjustment tool, clicking on the yellow and the greens. You just drag up and down to, to find the hues that you want. You do the same thing with the luminance and saturation. Digital greens just get a little out of control sometimes. Oh, cool, looks good. I think it looks great. What's up? That felt pretty good, right? All right, this is from Gwendolyn. Um, I know that, this, so this is when she was in um, Japan. One of our favorite photographers is Hideki Hamada, and I know she likes his style as well, so we're gonna try to do an edit similar to that. We actually already spent a long time working on it because it's a little tricky to get. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we did. So obviously, obviously it's like super bright and airy. It's got bluish and green tones to it. Our, our tone curve is pretty flat, but both the black point and the white point are Flicked. brought in a little bit, yeah. We super push the exposure because yeah. he shoots super airy. And so then the, we bring the highlights down to like retain some of that detail. Yeah, to compensate for the overexposure. It's just like playing with the, the shadows, blacks and whites, until you strike that the balance of contrast and exposure that you like. In the HSL sliders, we crank the yellow and greens. So this makes the yellow hues more green and the green hues more aqua. And we also brought the orange saturation down. That, that makes it like a lot cooler looking. And well, maybe push that up just a little bit actually. Okay. Just look, like not as much as you had it, but a little bit more. Maybe like there? Um, yeah, yeah, but you can go more maybe. Maybe like there is good. So you notice like a lot of the saturations brought out of this image. We added a little bit of yellow in the highlights and um, a little bit of like this co reddish color here in the shadows. You can use the eyedropper. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. To click on the fringe you want to remove. A lot of times it has issues with it, so we'll just grab that color. Yeah, and it's gone. Cool. cool. I would call that one done. All right, with this one, the first thing I think we should do is just make sure it's centered up here. You could try to use the auto transform and that straightened up things really nice. So one thing I'm noticing right away is this coming right out of his head. And you know, luckily it's like, it's easy enough to remove in Photoshop, but it is an extra step. So when you're shooting, just keep that in mind. The color's really even, so it shouldn't be too hard to get um, a pretty nice looking edit. I like the rich, the rich blacks and shadows for this but nothing too crazy. And then let's just bring the contrast back down. Cool. Yeah. And camera calibration. Too much. Whoops. Went a little too far. So I know it's a cold day, but I think it could stand like a, a little bit more warm. All right. Lemon out! I usually turn on profile corrections and then auto. Auto usually does a really good job. Let's start with that, maybe. Yeah. And um, just do a few tweaks here. There, I think the skin tone's looking better, right? Yeah, can you ibby it? So one thing you do in, with these indoor shots is raise your luminance in your warmer sections of color. I think that helps brighten things up and it helps like to wash out that color a little bit. The other thing is since she's underneath that like canned light, she has those like raccoon shadows. Mm -hmm. um, so I might just do an, an adjustment brush on her face just to brighten it up a little bit. You have to be really careful when lifting um, 
exposure on the face. I almost never do exposure. I almost always just lift the shadows and mm -hmm. highlight the smidge. Probably do some split toning if we wanted to. Let's just see if that improves it at all. I'm gonna crank it up and then bring it back down. Yeah, let's check it before and after. Nice. This photo reminds me of like a travel blogger or um, like a fashion photo. Well, it's on Instagram. funny you mention that because we made a travel blogger preset. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out, see how I made the preset. It looks something like that. Shifts a lot of the red over to that yeah. rusty color. Yeah, you can see that hue shift I make right there. I think I do want a little bit more blue in this. Just a touch. And um, I would bring in a graduated filter just to darken this corner. And also warm it up. Yeah. Yeah, the face is looking a little blue. It's a super stylized thing. It's popular right now. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily the timeless look that we always go for. Um, just because he shot it into the sun, we're losing some details on our face. So dehaze, actually pulling the black to fix that a little bit. Yeah, but you can also do dehaze. Dehaze always helps when you have that overpowering sun. Just be careful. You can look at our leg and um, it's getting affected a lot harder because it has a nice strip of uh, sunlight on it. And we can also just do black slider back down to bring in that contrast. I think a little saturation, pulling that back just a little bit, make sure it doesn't affect any other parts of your image like her face. And I think her face looks a little like pale to me. So I kind of want to add a little bit of saturation back into it. Oh, that's perfect. Brilliant. Yeah. So I think I'll just bump that up. Here, just, just dropping the saturation by 11, I think helps a ton. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Thanks for watching, and we hope this gave you some insight into editing in Lightroom. If you're interested in becoming part of the lab where all these people got to submit photos to us, you can join the waitlist by clicking the link in the description. We'll see you guys next time.